Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Societal Narcissism. This video is sponsored by contribution from Chris and here's his story. Hi Ollie, I'm a new subscriber and I wonder if you have any interest in sharing my story and letter from my estranged mother. I'm in my mid-40s, male, born to boomer parents, born 46 to 47. I've been no contact with my parents and most of my family of origin for about two years now. I'm the youngest of, of three and only boy. Growing up, I was never beaten or swore at or screamed at. Instead, my mother was notorious for being passive aggressive and manipulative. Growing up, she called this being tactful. It's amazing the labels that they give you, they give themselves to rationalize abuse. You know, I'm being tactful, I'm being smart, I'm sassy, I'm whatever it is. She honestly thinks she can say anything she wants so long as she doesn't use mean words. This allows her plausible deniability if you ever try to call her out on her hateful comments. I've, taught, I've heard you talk about mothers flipping the rage switch. However, in my mother's, in my mom's case, she was much more likely to hit the ice switch. She rarely lost her temper. She would instead turn cold, calculating, and vicious. Your comment about being held to an adult standard as children really hits home, as that was my experience. Ridicule, shame, and guilt were the currency in my family. So your mother was, like, instead of raging out, it was silent treatment. She'd ice you out, freeze you out, make you think you're alone to isolate you instead of, instead of screaming and yelling. And then she's like, I, you never yelled at, you were never called names. No, you silent treated me to, you know, you silent treated me into oblivion as a child. Which could even be more terrifying to a child if, if your mother's not talking to you. Until my 30s, I described my childhood as almost perfect, because that's how I, t I was told it was. Sure, I couldn't remember most of it, but my depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and eating disorders must simply, must simply be a result of me being a faulty, defective, or deficient person. At least that's what I thought. Side note, my siblings both have these issues too. Must have been something in the water growing up couldn't possibly be shitty parenting something you did and that's where the adult standard as a child comes in because you're, you're i'm sure your mother will blame you and your siblings for your own problems as children in my 30s i met my wife and started my own family a few months before that happened my parents retired halfway across the country to a tropical island I now had people I cared about, and I had no idea how to be in a health in a healthful, pos positive relationship with them. I almost lost them because of narcissistic fleas and beliefs I had picked up. The physical distance and the challenge of trying to build my own family finally allowed me to open my eyes to the toxic family system I came from and had been in denial about. Of course, this infuriated my mother and enabling father, who cannot tolerate me setting any boundaries or fathom that I had the right to make decisions about my life and their grandchildren without getting their approval first. And that's just it with boomers. Your children are their grandchildren before they're your children. Their grandchildren over being your children. That's how they, that's how they think. I watched them interact with my kids and would see them manipulating and gaslighting my kids, teasing them, disregarding their needs. When I tried to bring these things up, I was met with, well, we raised you and you turned out just fine. <laughs> oh. My enabling father would chastise me for any pushback. At one point he wrote me a nasty note saying I had no right to talk to my mother the way I did. I told her that I found, I found one of her manipulative convos with my eight-year-old daughter inappropriate and she'd never do anything to intent, and she'd never do anything to intentionally hurt those kids. Again, they want to tell you how to raise your, this is why they have to be gone no contact with, because they truly believe that they can do and say whatever they want, 
especially to your children. And how dare you challenge them on any of this? As if intention makes a difference in how much they hurt my kids. I'd set increasing, increasingly restrictive boundaries around the kids, which would lead to greater pushback from my parents. Over time, it went from spending a week or more with grandma and grandpa, they had purchased a summer home in my state, all, to only allowing a couple of visits a year, directly supervised by me with no overnights. Of course, my mom hates my wife and thinks she is responsible for the change in our parental child relationship. Well, in a way, she is, because you developed your own family, and that's what she resents. She sees, in, instead of your mother, see, your mother needs to blame your wife because you became the parents that they never were, and they see that as a bad thing. So, of course, somebody needs to be blamed for that, and that has to be your wife. So, it's not a blame. It's a credit. And that's what the narcissist does. The narcissist tries to place blame on the people who deserve credit for changing your life. We met at a public park with a small, with a small lake for swimming, fishing, and boating. I allowed my oldest to go out on the lake kayaking with my mom. It was a new interest of my oldest, and I could see them the whole time. When they got back in, I could tell something was off. The kids went off into the lake to swim and my mom sat down and my mom sat down by my mom. I guess I guess wife is just going to be pissy forever, she said. I had a long I had a long before set I had long before set a boundary that I was not going to allow my parents to talk down about my wife. They can think whatever they want, but keep it to themselves. I didn't say a word to her. I just stood up, gathered my kids' stuff, and left. And that's just it. They just believe they can do and say whatever they want, especially about your spouses, your significant others. Because, again, your wife doesn't deserve blame. She deserves credit for helping you see the light of what a proper parent is. Your, your, your mother sees your wife as such a threat because your wife is probably the opposite of what your mother ever was or ever could be and your mother fucking resents it a few weeks later she messaged me about seeing the kids once more before returning to their tropical home it was then that i said no more i am no longer going to let you hurt and manipulate my kids i'm no longer going to allow you to talk about my wife in the way that i wouldn't allow anyone else to do i put together a brief a brief polite and unemotional reply saying i didn't think another visit was appropriate as she can't treat my family with kindness or respect i didn't swear blow up call names or show any emotion at all here's the response i got and here's the problem with that, because that's her tactic, to not blow up, scream, yell, or no emotion. She views it because the narcissist, the narcissist thinks everybody thinks what they would do and how they would react in this situation, and your mother does the cold shoulder, silent treatment type of deal. So she is projecting what her intentions would be on you. Here's the response I got. I know the feeling, son, for about three days before each of the two-hour visits you allowed us this summer, my stomach was in knots, and for three days after, I was in tears. Oh, booty hooty ho. When oldest granddaughter told me while kayaking she wished to spend time at the cabin, I told her I would like that, but mom and dad said no for some reason. She said she was told it was because we are older now. My response was that we are getting older and I hope she has, she has babies. She had lets her parents see her children when her parents are old. Context, my daughter was 10 at the time. Of course, we didn't tell her the details. Not sure what boundaries were broken there or for that matter, what boundaries or decisions you have made that we have got, ever got against. 
It is true. I was shocked to be told I needed a six-week reservation to see my grandchildren. My mistake was thinking you would be happy to see your mom any time, especially after being apart so long after COVID. And again, this is the boomer. This is the boomer narcissist thinking that they have to be your top priority in your life at all times. Your mother resents your wife. She actually, they actually resent their own grandchildren. You must know you could show up at our doorstep at any hour, uh, any hour if the night or day, in the night or day, and you would be welcomed with open arms. If I had other plans, I would have rearranged them or you would have been told to make yourself at home. How was I supposed to know I would not be treated the same? I thought that that is what families do, do for each other. Context again. All right, context again. Context. Earlier that year, she had forwarded me a flight itinerary indicating she was coming to visit and stay with us. My wife said, that's fine this time, but next time, can you please check with us first to make sure we're available and we don't have anyone else using our guest room? This turned into her six-week reservation, resulted in a major temper tantrum from mom, and ultimately led my wife to finally cutting all contact with my family of origin. Right. Your mother, just they just want to bust in. How dare you have a life of your own? So, of course, they're going to blame your wife for setting up boundaries that are just absolutely necessary and appropriate. Back to the letter. I did not tell you, not near shot of the children, that I guess your wife is never going to get over being prissy. I guess I could have, I guess I could have used a kinder word, but that one seemed pretty accurate. Like, who are you? Who are you to talk about my wife like that? Who are you to talk about my wife like? But they think they're entitled to do and say whatever they want about you and especially your spouses. Fuck that. I do hope the boundaries you set for your children are for their benefit and not done as punishment to us because they can't deal with consequences, boy. Boy, do they hate those. I cannot imagine what it is to what it is to be gained from denying your children or for that matter, you and your wife contact with the people who who love you most in life and are your biggest cheerleaders. What I do know is I would never in my wildest dream treated my parents or my in-laws in the hateful way you have chosen to treat us. Poor you. Too bad you feel it was such a burden to allow us to see the girls in our two short visits this summer. Your wife has shared with us the terrible sacrifices your family has made to allow us to be a part of your family. I kind of thought sacrificing is what we did for our families. We certainly made enough of them while we were raising you and we're happy to do so now that we are old we could use your love and support to and your love and support you have chosen to abandon us you have your own family again again who's the child here who were the children what kind of son moves without letting the parents know, does not have five minutes to send out a birthday or Mother's Day wish, considers it an inconvenience to allow his children to visit their grandparents? You certainly did not turn out the, the way we thought you would. And there's the attack, boy. There's the attack. They can't help themselves. You did you so did the right thing. Because this type of passive aggressiveness is just so much more, it can be so much more damaging than just the outward, I mean, the outward aggressiveness. Because it's all under the surface. And like you said, plausible deniability it gives them. I remember a young man I was proud of, compassionate, smart, creative, sweet, and trying to make a positive change in the world. I miss the child that once told the Sunday school teacher that when he grew up, he was going to give all his sermons on love. Now all I see is a bitter, unhappy adult. I do hope you find what brings you, brings you joy in life, Chris. I hope and pray your daughters do not break your heart the way you have broken mine. Despite your hatefulness, just remember I am your mother. I love you and always will be there for you as long as I have breath in my body if you should ever need me. I hope you find peace in your heart, son. 
does not does it not seem strange that you and your wife are the ones that see us as awful people are the only ones that see us as awful people you are so lucky to have daughters mine seem to think we are okay people i hope you find the same in yours as you grow old old age will creep up on you faster than you will ever imagine and that's what really bugging them is getting old the fact that she opened by proudly telling me how she tried to undermine me and my wife to my daughter, the whole I hope you let your baby see their grandparents when they get older comment, infuriated me and reinforced to me that I made the right decision to cut them off. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because she's, she's telling you, we're going to keep undermining you. I'm going to keep passively, aggressively undermining your authority with your children. Because to them, they're not really your children. They're just their grandchildren. Since then, I've gotten occasional correspondence from them, including a short and generic apology card in the mail. Most recently, they sent me a message saying, we'll be in your state until XX date and would like to see our grandchildren. I did not reply. Anyway, sorry that this one has been so long, but I thought you and others might find some entertainment and insight in my story and her letter. I honestly think one of the reasons she lashed out so badly to me, setting even modest boundaries, is because growing up, I was largely the golden child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and again, they're their grandchildren before they're your children. That's what you got to keep in mind with the, with, with the boomer narcissists. They're their grandchildren before they're your children. Therefore, they have more right to access than you do. They have more right to influence them than you do. Sometimes I think it, it can appear that the golden child has it easy in narc families. I certainly can see that point of view, but I would argue that we just get screwed up in a different way from the scapegoat or, individ or, or invisible child. I've made that point several times about about golden children on, on my channel that they are like they are the golden child. They're just screwed up in a in a different way. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing being a golden child at all. Beliefs we learn, the social skills we use to be successful in our family of origin, being raised to think you're special sets up a lot of failures as adults. And when we, as golden children, finally set some boundaries, then they really lose it. Maybe that is a topic to explore in the future video, but I feel like this particular story has already gone on too long. Thanks for reading, and I hope someone finds this helpful. Chris. I've made that point about the golden children. And the problem is, like, when you're a golden child, that means there's black sheep. And God help you. If the, when the black sheep, when the black sheep go, no contact, oh boy, then the golden child becomes the black sheep. So, I mean, it's almost like your parents weren't getting the supply, especially your mother, the supply. I guess you have sisters. Imagine one of your sisters was the black sheep, which would kind of make sense with a, with a female narcissist, which is why then they'll just lean on the golden child and start trying to screw up their lives. And understand something. The reason she's blaming your wife. Okay, there's a very, there's a fine line to, between blame and credit when dealing with narcissistic abuse, especially with narcissistic boomers. Your boomer will blame somebody who actually deserves credit for helping you see the light, giving you clarity. And helping you go no contact. So, and it's a very fine line between the two. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Chris, for your contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. 
And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you want me to cover, something you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with either the Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, and email links in the description box below. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. Also, be sure to subscribe to both my Rumble channels. Follow me on Twitter and Telegram as well. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Societal Narcissism. Take care, everyone.